I'll now introduce you to another reaction called the Wittig reaction. Please remember that this name Wittig is German, hence the W here makes a V sound, not a W sound. In other words, I don't want any of you to call this a Wittig reaction, or I will cry. It is called a Wittig reaction. Now this reaction is supremely awesome because it converts a ketone into an alkene. So I want you to look at this. If I take a ketone and I treat it with this type of compound, it's a phosphorus that has some crazy crap on it. But the phosphorus is double bonded to a carbon. What ultimately ends up happening is this carbon that's doubly bonded to my phosphorus and this carbon that's doubly bonded to my oxygen get together and form a double bond between each other. The oxygen and the phosphorus end up bonding to each other and walking away. This is really a partner swap. It's kind of uh, like the uh, reality TV show wife swap. This carbon is married to this oxygen and this phosphorus is married to this carbon. They trade partners. The phosphorus walks away with the oxygen and these two carbons are now fused together as an alkene. Here's a really cool specific example of that. I've got my carbon doubly bonded to this oxygen. I've got my phosphorus doubly bonded to this carbon and they're going to do a partner swap. The phosphorus and oxygen walk away and these two carbons end up being doubly bonded to each other. You'll notice that this carbon here to the right also had two methyls attached to it, so they end up being attached, still attached to it in the final product. Once again, this is a very cool way of forming alkenes. So what is the mechanism of the Wittig reaction? Well, I'm going to show you here. What ends up occurring is if you draw this phosphorus carbon double bond, you'll notice that it actually can be shown as two different resonance structures. If I have the electrons go onto the carbon, I can have a carbanion and a phosphorus cation. So that phosphorus cation is a true resonance structure for this uh, phosphorus carbon double bond. When I've got this resonance structure existing transiently in the solution, the negative charge on the carbon comes and attacks the carbonyl carbon in my ketone. And then these pi electrons open up and thrust into this phosphorus, giving me this four-membered ring. These electrons then rearrange. These two electrons flip down like a trapdoor, and these two electrons flip up like a trapdoor, releasing my phosphorus oxygen double bond and my carbon-carbon double bond, as shown here. This will be our final topic before retiring this chapter. Thus far, we've talked a lot about nucleophiles coming in to carbonyl carbons, thrusting the electrons up onto the oxygen and generating this type of intermediate. If this negatively charged oxygen is protonated, it then gives this type of product. This type of addition of a nucleophile into a carbonyl is called direct addition or 1-2 addition. The reason is because we begin counting at the carbonyl carbon up to the oxygen, one, two. The nucleophile comes in at the one position and kicks the electrons up into the two position. So we call it direct or one, two addition. What if you have a ketone that looks like this? <clears throat> in other words, it has an alkene immediately adjacent to the carbonyl portion of the molecule. What in the world can happen there? Well, as it turns out, sometimes you can have the nucleophile, instead of adding directly to the carbonyl carbon, it will add into this carbon right here. You see this carbon that's colored blue here? If this nucleophile adds into this carbon, it flips these electrons over here like a door on a hinge and pushes these electrons up onto the oxygen. That gives me this type of intermediate. I hope you guys can see that. You're welcome to pause this and look at it a couple of times until this makes sense. Once you have this type of intermediate being generated, the electrons on this oxygen, you'll notice, can come back down here to form a double bond and push these electrons onto this carbon. See that? So this compound and this compound are resonance structures of each other. This 
negatively charged carbon then gets protonated when you quench the reaction with acid, ultimately giving you this product. So let's look at the net reaction again. If I start here with a ketone or aldehyde that has a double bond or an alkene immediately adjacent to it, a nucleophile can come in to this carbon and ultimately give me this type of product. This is the mechanism that this entire reaction traverses to get there. This is very different from the nucleophile adding directly to the carbonyl carbon because it's not. It's adding to the carbon that's at the beta position to the carbonyl carbon. This type of addition is not called 1,2 addition. It's called 1,4 addition because if we begin counting at the carbon that gets uh, uh, hit by this nucleophile, up to the oxygen we can count one, two, three, four atoms. So when the nucleophile comes in at this position, we call it a 1,4 addition. This type of reaction is also known as conjugate addition. Conjugate addition, just so you guys know, is also frequently called Michael addition, which is named after George Michael. Now, I'm, I'm actually just kidding. It's not named after George Michael. Not that any of my younger students really have a clue who that even is. It's actually named after its discoverer, a 20th century chemist named Arthur Michael, who, I've been told, was born into a family that was so rich that he could actually fund all of his own chemistry research without applying for any external grant money. Wow, what a life. <laughs> so here's an example problem that I want you guys to look at. The following compound was prepared by a conjugate addition reaction between an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone and an alcohol. I want you guys to identify the two reactants. I'm not going to give you the answer to this right now, but I'll let you guys think about it and we can talk about it more in class together. This concludes chapter 18. I invite you guys to take a break, go change your cat's litter box, and get some rest before going on to look our, at our next video presentation, chapter 19, which will be posted shortly.